So again, uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining today. Uh, my name is Joe. I am the campus recruiter here with uh, TCS. We're so excited that you're here today. Uh, again, we're just going to look to share a little bit about TCS, uh, who we are and what we do. And uh, we hope today is a, a very uh, informative session for you. And so with that, um, we're going to go ahead and jump in and, and get started. Uh, just a little bit of the plan for today. Uh, like I mentioned, we're going to tell you a little bit about TCS, uh, who we are, what we do. Uh, but again, I have a couple of my colleagues here that uh, are going to serve as a, as a panel today. They're going to tell you all about uh, the things that they do, um, you know, the work that's going on with them, a little bit of more perspective about what it's like to be part of TCS. Uh, we will talk a little bit about the uh, campus opportunities that we do have available that we're currently hiring for. Uh, we will also uh, tell you how to apply for those positions. And then as time allows, uh, we will jump. I think I got muted for a second. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me again. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's, with that, let's get started here. And like I said, we're going to jump right in and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, TCS and kind of who we are. So uh, just a quick introduction, uh, TCS or Tata Consultancy Service, we are part of the Tata Group. Now, uh, if you've not heard of the Tata Group, uh, we've actually been around, they've been around for a little over 150 years. Uh, they started in 1868. Uh, global company, over $110 billion in, in revenue. Um, and, and, you know, as you can see here, uh, we are a subsidiary of the Tata Group. Uh, some of the other uh, sub subsidiaries that you see here on the screen, uh, places like Tetley Tea, uh, 8 O'Clock uh, Coffee, uh, the Taj Hotels. They also do own Land Rover and Jaguar. And I will answer the first question now. If you come on board with TCS, no, you do not get a discount for Jaguar or Land Rover. I did ask, that was the first question I asked when I came on board. So, but that is part of the group. We are part of uh, Tata as, as a whole. Uh, a couple of things here that, you know, as you can see down in the corner, Jay and Tata, who uh, founded uh, Tata and Sons was the original name of the company. Um, you know, a couple of things that he established and, and those carry through uh, TCS as part of our company as well, starting with those uh, core values, you know, integrity, excellence, unity, responsibility, pioneer. Those are all pillars of, of what uh, makes up TCS. Um, you know, he also believed um, in giving back to the communities where he lived and worked. Uh, so you're going to see, we're going to talk a little bit about this unique philanthropic model. Uh, and as you can see, more than 50% uh, of the dividends that we generate uh, goes back to uplifting the community. So we're going to talk a little bit about our corporate social responsibility programs and, and what that looks like. But just wanted to give you a little bit of our parent company. And uh, now when it comes to TCS here, um, we like, we've been around for a little over 50 years. We are also a global company. We're based out of India. You can see some of the highlights here that uh, we've achieved. We started in 1968. Uh, you see some of the achievements along the way. Uh, the last one being in 2021, we crossed the $22 billion mark in revenue. So we are a, a very large company. So I want to give you a snapshot of what that looks like. So Globally, as you can see, we have over half a million employees worldwide. We work in 46 different countries. Uh, we're active with over 900 different clients. Um, and again, I like to put these uh, first and last two bubbles up here. Uh, again, besides the corporate social responsibility, um, diversity is very important to our company. We're going to talk a little bit about how diversity plays a, a big part of who we are and, and what we do. Uh, but as you can see, of our over half a million uh, employee base, uh, we come from 155 different diverse nationalities to make up our employee population. Uh, we're also the largest private sector employer of women. As you can see, we have over 165,000 women employed around the world. So uh, again, we'll talk more about diversity, but I just wanted to give you a quick global snapshot of uh, TCS. But now we're going to bring that here a little closer to home. Um, and TCS has actually been here in the U.S. for a little over 45 years. Uh, we have 25 offices across the U.S. Um, and, and again, as you can see here from uh, a revenue standpoint, we are the largest market 
for our company. Um, last year, we, you know, we mentioned we crossed $22 billion globally. Well, half of that actually came from the U.S. So we're an $11 billion company here in the U.S. There are 38,000 employees. Uh, I, you know, I touched on the corporate social responsibility. We're talking more about that, but you see a couple bullet points here. You know, we are the title sponsor for the New York City Marathon. Uh, we do a lot of other things, but you know, uh, you're going to see there's lots of ways that we believe in uh, uplifting communities where we live and we work. Um, you'll also notice here that you know, uh, again, we have 38,000 employees. But one of the little unknown facts about TCS is we're actually the number two recruiter of local IT talent here in the US. Now, to give you a little perspective of what that means, uh, last year within our campus team uh, here in the US, we hired a little over 2,000 uh, entry level positions with recent college graduates. This year, we've actually increased that number. We're looking to hire 3,000 entry-level positions and fill them with, uh, with recent college graduates. So we're definitely hiring. Uh, we're definitely looking to, to expand and grow that way. And then you can see the, how that ties into our customer base. You know, Currently, uh, we work with almost 70 of your Fortune 100 companies, a little over 200 of your Fortune 500 companies. So we have a very broad customer base that, that we work with. And I'll show you what that means here. Um, you know, We work in all different types of of industries and, and it's a little bit easier for me to show them to than to actually read them off to you. Uh, one of the running jokes is, you know, if there's a computer in that building, we probably work in that industry. So um, this is just to give you a little more of some of the areas uh, where TCS does work and with a lot of these other companies that we're currently working with. Okay. Now, just to bring that back here, let me tell you a little bit about what we do. Okay, because um, as I mentioned, you know, we're a global leader in technology. And, and we focus on consulting, IT services, and business solutions. Okay? So really, because we're consultants, we go where the work is. And, and we're able to be right there with our customers um, and, and walk through these technical projects pretty much from start to finish. And so that's why when we talk about, we offer them a very unique combination of both the tech experience, uh, the business intelligence, as well as acting as a catalyst for change, we're still delivering results. So uh, from a very holistic uh, view, you know, we're this innovative consulting partner right there with our customers, and we're the ones delivering these cutting edge IT solutions. So again, that's just a little bit of a snapshot about TCS, kind of who we are and what we do. Um, but I did also touch on, you know, we, we want to talk a little bit about diversity. And diversity you're gonna find is very important uh, to TCS. It is part of our DNA and our makeup. So just to share a little bit with you about that, um, you know, we participate in the women in STEM programs across multiple universities here uh, in the US. Uh, we engage with our uh, HBCUs or historically black colleges and universities. Uh, believe me, I can attest to that because I am the campus recruiter that does that. So um, again, we just wanna make sure we are creating a diverse talent pipeline, that we are very inclusive in making sure that we're reaching out to all people uh, who may be interested uh, in these roles and being part of our organization. Now, the nice part with TCS is the, the diversity doesn't just stop with, with the recruiting or once you come on board. One of the big things here with TCS, um, you know, as I mentioned, we have 38,000 employees across the US. Well, how do you make that big of a company a little bit smaller? Part of that is through what we call our employee resource groups. And these are groups that are designed for folks who have similar interests or backgrounds, uh, a place to where they can connect. You know, you can network with other folks across the U.S. Um, in some of these cases, these ERG groups are global, uh, but, you know, all of these are here in the U.S. And it really gives you a chance to connect with folks outside of just what your day-to-day -day work life would be. So uh, as you can see, there are seven of them. Uh, you know, just to highlight a couple of them, you know, our, our network of outstanding women. Uh, we also work with uh, Enable, which is our network of people with disabilities and their allies. Um, you know, our, our Q Colors, which is the network of the LGBTQ 
uh, community. Um, you know, our, we also have our Uno Parenting, um, which is a network of uh, single parents, uh, the Arise Group, uh, which is our network of African and American, African American and Black associates. Uh, we have our network of uh, Latino Americans and Latinx associates, and of course, our employee resource groups for our veterans. So uh, again, we, we want to be as inclusive and diverse uh, once you join the organization as well. So uh, again, that's just a little bit on uh, TCS in terms of our, our diversity and, and, what, and what that looks like. All right. So uh, again, I hope this is giving you a little bit of, of TCS, kind of who we are and, and some of the things that we do. We're going to talk more about that. But right now, what I want to do is I want to introduce you to uh, our panelists today. And uh, these, these gentlemen here are going to uh, part of TCS. And uh, I'm going to bring them in and uh, let them kind of introduce themselves here in just a moment. But, um, you know, we have uh, Christopher and uh, Debita who is here with us today. Um, and this is just a Hello. real short uh, introduction, as you can see uh, from here. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of transition here and I'm going to step back and I'm going to ask them a lot of questions that I typically get from students. And uh, we're going to have them talk a little bit about that and, and some of these things uh, that, that uh, tend to come up. So um, let's do this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in and, and ask our first question. And while I do that, uh, Christopher, I'm going to come to you. I'm going to ask you, go ahead and introduce yourself. And then after your introduction, tell me a little bit about the role uh, with TCS that you have and what's a typical day like for you? All right. Um, thank you so much. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is Christopher. Uh, I've been with TCS since August of 2020. Um, I'm maybe like three months right after I graduated from uh, UCSD. Um, and uh, I suppose uh, just to kind of give you a sense of what I do on the daily. So I'm a software engineer. Um, that means that I work directly with a client. Uh, and so you know, that's what we call an allocation. So for example, I'm allocated with a client in the Bay Area. And on a typical day, I log in with my team and I jump right away into working on some assigned issue or feature request. Um, on some days, we hold meetings where I discuss my progress and any challenges that I might have with those assigned tasks. Um, and since I'm working remotely, I get to write out my hours across the days I need. <clears throat> so perhaps uh, I work a few hours in the morning, step away if I need to to run an errand, I can step right back in and continue where I left off. All right, perfect. I appreciate that. And so, uh, Devita, I'm going to go ahead and bring you in, sir. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself? And same question. Tell us a little sure. bit about your role with TCS and what's a typical day like for you? Right. So, am I audible to you? Yes, I can hear yeah, you. Yeah, hi. So, hi, all. Um, thanks, Joe. Um, so, I work as a project manager at TCS. Um, I, I work for a one of the TCS clients, like, Christopher mentioned, so we allocated to a particular client. So my client is a, a leading global medical device company uh, based out of the area. So part of my daily activity, I conduct project status calls, you know, with my team, uh, all team members, and uh, I work with my project development needs, like um, what are the dev leads, the screen plans, resource management, and all. Uh, I also conduct the technical architectural meetings with with my client to look at the future roadmaps and, you know, work on, on those areas. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. And I appreciate that. All right. So, um, so now that we know kind of who you are and a little okay. bit on, on what your roles are, uh, let's mm. talk to the students mm. and, and, you know, what I want to find out is why is TCS a great place for someone who is just about uh, to graduate from college. What, what makes TCS uh, special? And, and Davida, I'm going to start with you. I know you've been here a little bit longer. Um, I believe the 16 years that, that you mentioned, uh, but why is this a good place for someone to start their career? Right. So um, like, uh, like we mentioned, most of our uh, TCS business is from IT services, right? So like you mentioned, you, you see a computer, TCS is there, right? So I, I can say you name industry, and TCS is there. Name it a, like a um, medical device company or a retail business, finance, banking. So we are touching all the industry. Now to satisfy their business need or IT needs, we need to be on top of any latest technology. So 
if you come to TCS, we have the expertise in all and every technology which is available in the market. So we don't have any excuses like we cannot learn this new technology because we have to learn the new technology to solve our IT problems for our customers. Okay, so that would be one of, one of the very important criteria um, where it is a good start for anyone at TCS to learn and you know um, all the cutting edge technology. Now, <clears throat> now if you look at um, any career, you need a mentor, right? Now at, at, at TCS, you have a very good mentorship program. Like we have people like 20 years, 30 years of experience. And like Joe mentioned, we have different uh, training programs where you will be assigned with a mentor and he or she will be guiding you throughout your journey in the program or in the TCS um, stay, right? So that is another very good advantage at TCS, I would say, which really helps the people to grow in their career. And the la uh, another one would be we have tied off with a lot of training. Sorry, was there any question? No, nope, keep going to beta. We'll yeah. do the questions towards the end. Okay, so the, another point would be we have tie ups with many uh, learning platforms like TCS has license and which is open to all our associates. So you can really leverage those training and learning platforms to you know, grow in your career. Yeah, so those are the main points I can say uh, would be really benefit to do a good start in IT industry or IT career. Great. Um, so Christopher, I know you're a little bit newer. You mentioned you joined in August. So uh, tell us why, you know, maybe from your perspective, this was a great fit for you and why uh, other students would definitely want to join TCS. Yeah, so just to, I guess, uh, reiterate everything that was already said, uh, TCS offers its employees so many opportunities for professional growth and also for personal growth. Um, when I was fresh out of university and TCS offered me a position, I had very little knowledge or experience in industry. All right, all of, all of what I've done and all my work and my experience was confined into mainly just academic settings. Um, but TCS gave me a bounty of resources that helped me to do a lot more with the knowledge I already had and then also to help me um, acquire new skills, important skills that are necessary for us individually as, in, um, as, uh, as uh, engineers or as uh, consultants, and also for Tata as a whole to stay on the edge of, um, of an ever expanding industry. Um, and you know that access to, to knowledge is immeasurable. And moreover, TCS even pays you for the time you spend expanding your abilities, whether you do it through an online uh, learning platform, as was just mentioned, or even instructor-led courses. And it's just as important to TCS as to yourself that you are always learning, you're always improving, you're always um, one step ahead of the game because you really are a product. All right, great. Thank you both for, for answering that question. Now, uh, the next question that I get, and, and a lot of people want to know, because especially as, as consultants and we're going where the work is, how would you best describe the culture of TCS? So, uh, Christopher, I'm going to start with you on this one. Um, tell me about the culture of TCS. So, I learned very quickly how caring and team-focused TCS um, is from the beginning. Um, TCS is a community, one that actively listens, um, one that addresses our concerns. Um, and I find that everyone I've interacted with, my direct coworkers or people not necessarily in, involved with my client, but, um, but maybe with another client, they're also very respectful and they lend themselves to whatever help they can provide. Um, and, you know, uh, because of that, and, and because that's sort of just a, something I like, I try to do, I, I, I try myself, I, I myself try to be the best. Uh, I mean, sorry, I think I lost my words. I myself try my very best to uh, pitch in wherever uh, my coworkers might be experiencing setbacks, wherever someone in the community might be facing some trouble. Um, and, you know, I think that's, that's so important, especially as a 
I suppose, a recent graduate because um, there's so much competition um, uh, at university or with employers, um, so much of it. And it's really like this fierce firewall that kind of comes at you. But, um, yeah. you know, at, you know at, that at TCS, everyone is on your side um, and everyone is trying their best to bring everyone else up. All right. Great. I, I appreciate that. Uh, so, uh, Devita, I'm going to turn it over to you. How would you describe the culture of TCS? Oh, you're still on mute, sir. Okay, is it audible now? You now? Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, so like you mentioned, you already uh, before um, the diversity, right? So that's the main strength of TCS. So despite of unique backgrounds, experience, and you know perspectives, we all work together for a common goal towards our company. Um, the second one would be uh, like employee friendly environment, and uh, TCS really hears like Christopher mentioned. We have like yearly surveys, like managing uh, such a big number of employees is not easy, right? Like different policies, the different ask and all. So every year TCS conducts surveys to understand the need of the people, and we try to improve the process. So that's the best part of it, right? We never stick to a common process. We evolve with more people. We, we listen to people, this is listen to people and evolve the process. So that's really the best part of it. And uh, the, another culture would be the giving back to the community, like Joe, you already mentioned. We have a very good presence there. Uh, end of the day, TCS plays a major role to give it back to the community, all this CSR activities. So those are the main you know, culture, I would say, we really uh, appreciate our um, being at TCS. Okay, great. No, to me, I appreciate that uh, from both you and Christopher. Great answers. And, and so um, I do want to talk about another question. Again, I get a lot of these from, from the students, and uh, it's great that you guys are able to, to speak to these because you guys are uh, in the field, you're working with the customers, but um, I want to talk a little bit about the opportunities for advancement and, and uh, you know, uh, Davita, I'm going to bring you in first. I know, again, you've been with uh, TCS for, for 16 years here. And so, you know, maybe share a little bit about what, what that means. What opportunities uh, for advancement are there and how would you describe them to our audience? Right. Like I mentioned, like TCS is always up to date with all the cutting edge technology. Like if I take my example, I work in a medical device company, but I don't implement the virtual reality or uh, kind of thing. But the new concept like metaverse or 5G, uh, TCS is well versed on those technology. So I get to get a chance or I, I, if I go to my the center of excellence of TCS, even if I, I'm, I, I'm not working on those technology with my customer, but I do get the opportunity to you know, study the use cases participate in various uh, proof of concepts. So that really you know, improves my career and my technical skills. So in a way I can say you are not really limited to your work. You have a lot of opportunity. So you can really, really learn the new technology available in the market. A lot of trainings are available. So that really helps you to improve you know, in your career and all the mentorship we have. Like you get mentorship like 30 years, 40 years of people are your mentor and, and they, they show you a different perspective of the growth in your career, right? So that really helps. Okay. All right. Davida, just a quick follow-up. How many uh, different clients have you worked with? Rough, rough estimate uh, in your time with TCS. I, uh, with TCS, I worked with three different clients. Um, one is a semiconductor major located in Bay Area. Uh, the current client is uh, a medical device company. All right, excellent. All right, uh, so Christopher, how about how about you? I know you mentioned again you just uh, joined in, in in August, but um, what what is uh, you know the opportunity for advancement here at TCS? What have you seen, and what can you share with folks? Yeah, um, you know, I feel like there's not much more than I could say. I mean, uh, let's say every every allocation is a chance to grow professionally. I've learned so much more working with my clients. Uh, than I could have expected, let's say, um, in university. Um, and you know what I learned working with my client will help me to um, show TCS um, that I'm also kind of just 
um, much more of an asset than when I initially started. Um, you know, I again, since I'm so new, uh, relatively, <laughs> I haven't quite experienced that vertical climb. But um, I know that all of these different experiences and all this exposure to these new technologies um, uh, will kind of have have uh, have shown me that there are so many bigger things in my horizons with TCS. Um, and I would say that there's and specifically, there's so many opportunities to just learn something new. Um, one thing that I that I kind of look forward to, I suppose, if if the if the right conditions kind of pop up for me, is um, let's say uh, I do a lot of software, but maybe I want to get into the more electrical side of things. There there are endless opportunities for learning about that sort of stuff, um, ex uh, working with it with uh, with the clients um, uh, to allow me to kind of make that large shift. I would say in in my um, in my career path, and so that's that's that that's one really big opportunity that people have when they when they work with TCS. All right, great. Uh, again, appreciate uh, all of all of the the feedback and and the information on that. Now, uh, I want to transition here a little bit. Um, you know, because we we are in in the midst of a uh, of a pandemic, and um, you know, I do want to talk a little bit about what that adjustment has been like, um, because again, as consultants, we go where the work is, right? And so, with the pandemic, we stopped going out uh, out to places, and we've kind of had to make that shift from being in person and on site. Uh, to working remotely, um, and and some folks have that's all they've known, you know, since they've come into the workforce. Uh, for some of us, we've had to make some adjustments to that. Um, so, um, so uh, Christopher, I'm going to start off with you again, and and tell me what that uh, transition has been like for you, and and uh, even if you go back, uh, you know, to to your time at university, when the, when if that's which happened around that time, but. Tell me, what has been the biggest adjustment for you working remotely versus, you know, potentially being in, in an office during this pandemic? So, as you mentioned, I actually did experience the shift while I was still um, on campus. Um, and so I guess in a quote unquote strange way, uh, my, my, I'm sort of fortunate to have been working remotely since I joined with TCS. Um, but one thing that I kind of have, have experience and have learned to better control is, um, well, let me put it this way. My kitchen is right outside the door. And sometimes I just need to sit down, eat something. Um, maybe I'll just instinctively make a meal and kind of just take a small plate for myself. Um, but I wouldn't come back in to my room or my little mini office to, to, keep, to keep working. I, I sort of um, begin to... Uh, Let's say the line between this space and the next sort of starts to blur. I find myself spending a lot of time there. Um, I, at least I found myself spending a lot of time there. Um, and I think, you know, to that end, there are plenty of amenities you might expect in an office space that are available from home. You just got to look at it in the right, um, but from the right perspective. So while there are a lot of distractions, um, one thing I can say that has helped this, this uh, little, um, pick of me, of mine is, well, TCS is just very flexible and so is my client. Um, so if I need to step away to do something else, as I've said before, I have that opportunity, I have that freedom. Um, and I, I think I've been able to uh, um, allow myself to more comfortably work in different settings, not just in my room um, and, and also feel comfortable to uh, take that time for myself and then know that I can jump right back into work without affecting really anyone else in the team. Uh, I know that was sort of a, an off response to that question, but, uh, but I've, uh, you know, you learn to do, you learn to, to work through it as with anything else. All right, perfect. No, thank you for that, Christopher. So, uh, Davita, let me let me pull you in here because uh, I'm sure you were used to going into the office and kind of also had to make that transition. So, tell me a little bit about what what the biggest adjustment has been for you uh, going from in person to to remote during this pandemic. Yeah, right. Like um, 
working from home when families are, is around is like it was challenging initial days but this has been like this right for everyone so like Christopher months and client is very flexible so as DCS so we are able to manage um, so that's one ch one change or adjustment we're making like you know <laughs> working in the family environment and another uh, area we should really um, do is like if imagine you are going to office and and you take um, in the lunch break you go for some walk around in your with your friends colleagues and you talk about something else i think those things are not happening so so those things we need to you know um, mindfully take care like you know um, i have a goal of 10000 steps every day right so if you go to office you know Eventually, in, in office itself, you complete 5,000 steps, right? <laughs> the cafeteria and all these things. That doesn't happen when you work from home, but suddenly you have to take care of your health, right? So, so mindfully, you have to take care of those things so that do the adjustments you have to make. And uh, yeah, you need to uh, create focus time, like Christopher Moon said, like uh, uh, there'll be a lot of distraction, but you really need to um, put a focus time, you know, to all the things and all. And, 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 Team and client is very flexible. Uh, we do save uh, times in the travel and all, so we should better, you know, it's about time management. You use that time in then go for a walk, you know, complete your daily goals. So do that just means you have to make mindfully. Absolutely. Nope. Uh, great, great points, both of you. Thank you so much for, for sharing on that. Uh, because it is, it, it's a little bit of a change and uh, rebalancing your day and, and making sure you have uh, time for your work and, you know, being able to step away and, and try to help uh, not let those lines blur so much. So great insight. And uh, so I appreciate both of you on that. So um, now the next question I, I want to bring up because, you know, we, it is March and I know uh, there are a lot of students who uh, maybe are preparing to start interviewing for whether it be internships or full-time positions, things along those lines. So I want you guys to, to help our, our audience out with that a little bit here. Um, and, and I want to give, want you to give me at least one do and one don't when it comes to both the resume and and the interviewing process you know what are some things uh that we can help our audience to help them prepare as we start entering into this uh recruiting time and uh, help folks to be uh successful in you know whether it's with tcs or, or anywhere else because you know again ultimately we you know my goal is i want to see everyone find the job that they like that they love that they want to do and uh i'm going to turn to you guys for a little bit of help then advice that we can give uh to folks here so uh Devita, i'm going to start with you give me give me one do and don't when it comes to both resume and an interview yeah i'll say um do a good research about the company like what is the job profile what exactly they're uh, looking for be prepared right so that's my advice for the do. And for uh, the don't, um, I would say uh, uh, if you are not sure about any answer, don't just say um, you know, anything. You can always say you are not sure, just try, but don't just, uh, if you're very not, if you're not very sure, don't answer it. But if you are like 50% sure, just just mention that I'm, I'm like I'm not very sure, but this is what I think is, is could be a possible design of or solution for this. And and uh, um, also, if you are when you in, in interview phase, you'll have different interviews like technical interviews than HR interviews. So try to understand what question you should ask where. Um, when you are in a technical interview, you should never discuss about your salary or things like that all the stuff that is HR question so you have to really differentiate what to ask what not to ask so that would be my advice okay. yeah great very good advice uh Christopher how about you what what advice would you give for folks who are uh, were, were kind of in the spot where you were just a few months ago so I would say um do stick to what you know best. So if you have a, a good skill, let's say with a particular programming language, um, you make sure that that's front and center on front and center on your resume and that you use those skills in an interview, let's say a technical interview. 
Um, and you sort of on a similar note, uh, as the expression goes, try to be your best self. And that's sort of, I think, the best conduit for being your best self when you're both in an interview or when you're um, um, kind of throwing your uh, fishing line out there to uh, prospective employers. And then um, I would say, don't hesitate to pause and reflect and plan. Um, so in an interview, let's say if you're expected to spit out the, uh, the a correct and complete answer in the first five minutes, let's, let's just you know imagine. Believe me, that's not where you wanna be. A decent company um, and a good uh, interviewer will want you to explain your strategy and above everything else, they'll want you to articulate what you're thinking. Um, you know, the, the, a lot of, I think there's a lot of anxiety with, am I taking too long? Am I, am I, am I too quiet? Am I not, uh, am I saying too much? Um, but all the time in that interview is for you to use. Um, so use as much of it as you can and communicate what it is you're going through because um, giving the interview a sense of how you think will be a, a lot more valuable in the end than a complete and correct answer. Um, a lot of that speed, let's say if you want to get it done in five minutes, all that speed will come with experience. All right, that is great advice, Christopher. Thank you so much uh, for that. Um, and since, you know, uh, I, I am the HR person in the room here, uh, I, I, the one thing I would always add, and uh, I'd echo everything that, that you two had, had mentioned, but uh, one of the biggest challenges that, that students run into uh, is that sometimes this is their first job. And, and this is the first time, uh, you know, they're interviewing for this and they'll take the approach, well, I only have school experience. And guys, I want to encourage you that your school experience is a lot more relatable than you think. Um, you know, when you have to work in teams, you know, you have to be able to uh, communicate. You have to be able uh, to work together. Um, you know, at, as in, I'm sure in, in your college uh, projects, as well as in, in, in the industry, there are times that things go off the rails and, and things don't go exactly as planned. And uh, it's being able to understand what went wrong, come up with a solution on how you're going to fix it, and then go ahead and get everything back on, on track. So a lot of communication, uh, a lot of being able to work together, a lot of understanding and listening to everyone's perspective uh, to come up with those situations. So even though it is only a, you know, a, a school project, the skills that you are learning are going to be invaluable. And don't be afraid to highlight those, you know, when, when you're talking in an interview going, you know, hey, this is the project uh, that we have. You know, we were a four person team and this was our objective and this is what we did. And, you know, we ran into a challenge. Here's what it was. And uh, this is the solution that we came up with. This was my role in helping to fix that. And uh, then here's how the project ended. And so I would encourage you guys do not diminish your experience at, at school. You're gonna find that um, that is very, very, uh, re, very helpful in terms of when you get out in, into the industry. So I'm just gonna add that piece on there just cause uh, uh, that's something I tend to get a lot. But uh, uh, Christopher, uh, Demita, hang tight with me here. Um, I appreciate all your answers and all your insights. I'm gonna go through and, and share a few more things and then uh, we'll come back when it's time for questions um, uh, from, from our audience. So uh, hang tight with me here, but uh, guys, since we're on the subject of, uh, you know, recruiting and, and interviewing and resumes, let, let's kind of continue on that thought. And, and let me share with you a little bit about some of the opportunities that we do have here at TCS. Uh, because again, we're looking to hire uh, a summer internship position as well as three full-time positions here. So um, as I mentioned, you know, as, as the number two recruiter of local IT talent here, we're hiring 3,000 people. So let me share with you uh, what, what these are. Uh, so again, for, for starters, um, you know, the first position that we have here is our uh, summer internship position. Okay, now, the summer internship positions, as you see here, uh, they will run anywhere from typically eight to 12 weeks. Uh, obviously, these are paid internships. 
Uh, the great part about this, and you've heard this during the conversation, when we bring a person on board for an internship, we place them at a client location. They're given a mentor, someone they can work with and uh, someone that they're able to ask questions of. And uh, you guys get a chance to really see what a day in the life is, you know, being part of these uh, customer meetings, uh, seeing what some of the deliver deliverables are, being asked to contribute to that. Um, so it really does give you a great way to see what a typical life is in working with a global consultancy company. Now, when it comes to what we're looking for, now, again, we do look for folks who are uh, obviously enrolled in a STEM major. Uh, we do ask you to have a 3.0 or higher cumulative GPA, uh, you know, valid U.S. Uh, work authorization. Uh, we do need someone, you know, who works very well in a group or team setting, uh, someone who's comfortable working in a client-facing environment, even though all of our internships are going to be virtual, um, you know, still need that, you know, being the face of a customer and or being the face of a uh, of TCS at a customer site. So uh, those are things that are very important to us. Now, uh, our internship positions mirror our full time positions. And what I mean by that uh, our summer internships run along. We have an, a summer internship for software engineering. Uh, for engineering, which is a little more on the hardware side, and then also for data analysts. So you're going to see those um, as we talk about the full-time position. So, uh, but then again, that is the summer internship position that we do have available. Um, so let's talk full-time positions. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, these, these full-time positions are for those uh, students who are going to be graduating this coming spring or summer. Um, or if you've already graduated, uh, you know, within the last year, you are eligible for these roles as well. Now, I have four requirements um, for these positions, okay? We are looking for someone who is graduating with their degree in a technical discipline, someone who is graduating with a 3.0 or higher cumulative GPA, uh, someone who does have permanent ongoing work authorization uh, for the U.S., and then someone who is open to relocation. Now, real quick, uh, I will add that uh, if you are an international student, uh, we, do, we do hire international students for our full-time positions. With the only additional requirement that we do have is that you must be graduating with your master's degree. Okay? Other than that, the, it's all the same uh, four requirements that, that do apply. Um, now, when we talk about these being truly entry-level positions, you know, um, uh, we talked a little bit about, we, we're not looking for a lot of depth of knowledge. I know uh, Christopher touched a little bit on that, you know, what he learned in college, but so much more once he joined. So really what stands out to us is uh, kind of like what we talked about. You know, I need someone who is, uh, who works really well in a team environment. Everything that we do at TCS is team-based. Uh, you know, you could be working with uh, TCS as an offshore team. Uh, you know, you could be working with, um, you know, that client's employees, contractors, vendors, whatever the case may be. Uh, we need somebody who is very customer centric, someone who understands that the work we do can very much affect a company's products, offering or services. So we want someone with the mentality of not only do I want to meet, but even exceed those customer expectations. Um, you know, we need somebody again in that client facing role, even though a lot of these are our setup is virtual, but we need someone who's comfortable being that face of TCS and someone who understands that when they go out to a company that they're going to be part of that company's culture, that environment, part of that whole ecosystem. So those are things that are very important to us. So uh, again, uh, you'll find that these four requirements, along with some of these other things, are, are universal for all three of our entry level positions. All right. So again, starting with this one, this is for our software developers, you know, our coders, our programmers, uh, things along those lines. Now, if you are uh, more on the hardware side, that is what our engineering position is for. That This is for your mechanical engineers, your electrical engineers, industrial engineers, biomedical engineers. Um, so uh, if, if that is more of your interest, again, the same four requirements uh, are in place uh, and, and same soft skills, okay? All of these are truly entry-level positions. The third uh, full-time opportunity we have is our data analyst role. Okay. These are for your data scientists, your data engineers, uh, your BI developers, those who want to work in that, that big data space. So uh, again, you see uh, the requirements, you know, uh, bachelor's or master's, you know, in business or data, um, you know, uh, mathematics, statistics, uh, physics, you get a lot of different uh, 
um, you know, folks that are interested in these roles. So uh, again, whether it's software engineer, the engineer, or the data analyst, again, the focus is a lot on the soft skills and, you know, being uh, someone who is very enthusiastic, someone who has that passion, uh, and, and that's going to come through. Because like, like you guys heard, when it comes to the training part, TCS believes in lifelong learning. And, and that really starts from uh, day one. So anyone who joins the organization um, in these entry-level positions, we put them into what's called the Initial Learning Program, or ILP. This is an eight to 12-week technical training program. Uh, this is where you get a chance to learn not only how TCS does things, uh, but you get a chance to learn uh, all of the latest technologies uh, that you would need, all of, you know, things that you'll need to get ready to go out to a client location. You know, we want a person who completes this training to feel prepared, equipped, and confident that they have the tools they need before they go out to a client location. Okay. Now, again, um, this is a fully paid training. Uh, so you're paid your full regular salary while you're training. So think about that. That's two to three months. We're paying you to learn. And that's how important this is to us. We want you uh, to be ready uh, so we can go out to those customer locations and, and really get started. But uh, I'm going to take one step further. You know, uh, you heard uh, both of our speakers talk about, you know, other, other ways to learn. We have a learning management system where you can take online courses to continue to build your uh, te technical skills. Um, you know, if in some cases, if there is something that is not offered, it's rare, but if it does happen, um, if it if it is you know within the scope of work that you're doing, it is possible that you know with your manager approval, you can go out and get that training certification, things like that, and, and TCS can pay for that. So we believe in continuous learning. And like I said, this is how it gets started. So uh, this is this is that ILP program. Um, right now, because of COVID, it is being done virtually. Um, so right now, that initial eight to 12 weeks will be done virtually um, and, and getting you ready for that client location. Okay. And speaking of that, I do want to talk a little bit on relocation. And I want to explain a little bit on, on how this piece of our process works. Uh, I know both our, our speakers are based here in, in the Bay Area. I'm, I'm based here as, as well. But um, the way we do relocation, um, what we do is we ask folks to be open to relocating within a region. And as you guys can see here on the screen, we've divided the country up into six different regions. Now, with you guys being here in, in, in San Jose and, uh, you know, at San Jose State, you guys fall under what we would call our Pacific region. Now, the Pacific region, as you can see, there's three states, uh, Washington, California, and Oregon. So what we do is, um, you know, when a person comes in, they join the organization, they go through that eight to 12 week technical training program based on the training that they've done uh, and based on our business date, you know, we will put them at a client location somewhere within that region. You know, again, the Pacific region being Washington, California or, or Oregon. Now, it can be somewhere else. Um, you know, we get some folks who are like, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm maybe I'm from a different area or a different state, or maybe I'm ready to kind of branch out and, and, and move to a different area. You guys can select the, the region that you want to work in. Our only requirement is that we ask that you're open to relocate within any of those states listed. So if you want to go over to the East Coast, uh, you see all the states that, that are listed out there. It's essentially the Northeast. Uh, you know, if, if you're more kind of the, uh, the Southern U.S., you know, the, the, south, uh, the Southern region, great spot to get started. So really up to you. You can kind of choose where you want to work. We just ask you to be open to uh, relocating. Now, one of the questions that I tend to get is, well, how often do I have to move? How often does that work? So I will tell you for anyone who does join uh, in these entry level positions, the, the first project will run anywhere from 12 to 18 months. Now, after that 12 to 18 months, you do have a couple of options. Uh, if you do like the client location where you're at, you know, you can look to move to a different project and, and stay there. Um, if you want to make a change, you know, um, if you want to make a change to a different technology, uh, different client, uh, different industry, you can do that as well. Uh, we do have an internal team that works with all of our TCS consultants, helping them with that next project. So uh, there is that the opportunity to, to make that move. Um, the only thing, like I said, that team will say, the more open you are to relocation, 
potentially the more opportunities that, that are available to you. But um, again, it, it's really up to you on how you want to grow and, and see your career develop from there. All right. Hopefully, this is something that sounds interesting to you. So we'll talk a little bit on ways on how to apply. Uh, now, you can always go to tcs.com slash careers. That is a great way to do it. However, I'm going to make one more recommendation for you. Uh, currently, right now, all of these positions are posted on Handshake. All right. So what we're asking is folks to do is go ahead and apply on, on Handshake. Now, I know if you're at the uh, career fair last week, um, you know, this is probably something you might have seen before. Uh, so you can, uh, if you have not done so already, we definitely encourage you to apply on, on Handshake. Um, again, you'll see all of the positions listed there from the summer internship position, uh, along with the other three full-time positions that we offer, the software engineer, the analyst data service, that's what we call the, the data analyst role, and uh, the engineer position. Now, also on this screen, uh, in the beginning, as I mentioned, I am the campus recruiter. I'm always going to be your first point of contact as we're going throughout this process. Uh, so my email address is down here at the bottom. Uh, you guys can feel free to, to take that down and, and you guys can reach out to me um, as far as uh, questions or you know how things go. Uh, we are getting ready to start the interview process. So uh, you heard a couple of great tips on ways to prepare for that and, and uh, definitely encourage you guys to do that. But we are going to be starting our interviews here uh, within the next week or two. So definitely you want to start uh, applying now uh, for these positions. So uh, with that, um, I want to go ahead and take uh, the last of our time here in regards to questions and, uh, and, and see uh, what questions that, that you guys have, what are things that uh, we might be able to, to answer for you. I'm gonna bring back in our, our technical host um, and see if they can help us a little bit with this part of it. Um, if there are questions, if there's a way we can make folks audible so they can uh, ask their question, if you guys can help us with that piece. Is that us, are we the technical host? Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, we'd be happy to help them. Uh, so I'm just reading these off in chronological order. We got some questions during the time that you were talking. And as as Joe said, uh, while we're addressing this, um, uh, uh, you're welcome to keep typing the questions in the chat. Eventually, we will get to them as much as we can. But if your question is not reached at this point today, um, we do have Joe's email in the chat. So you're welcome to address those questions to him. Uh, but starting off, uh, uh, would you be willing to quickly go back to the slide about the uh, about uh, internships and like, do these cover like the summer, uh, like the summertime span? Yes, these do cover the summer uh, summertime internships. So uh, usually the summer internships will start based on when you would graduate, whether that's uh, usually we have them starting in, in May or June. Um, we, and it's a good point. We do also have uh, internships that do run during the spring and, and fall semesters, but for right now our, our focus is on the summer. Thank you. Uh, while we're on this topic, uh, what are the due dates for people to apply for the internships and versus the full-time opportunities? Uh, both the interviews are going to be starting within the next one to two weeks, so I would encourage you to start applying now. Yeah, very uh, soon. Yeah, would be a good time for that. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, from the information you all are seeing today, uh, you know, please make a decision as soon as you can. Maybe this weekend, if possible. Uh, are there data analyst rules available for summer internship? Yes, all of our summer internships uh, mirror the full-time role. So there is the summer internship for the software engineer, for the engineer, and for the data analyst. Thank you. We got a couple of clarifying questions about the internship. That is, uh, whether sponsorship is, is available for internships. I think you said that U.S. citizenship is required. Is that right? Correct. For, for, the, uh, for the internship program, we do not offer this to international students, uh, but we can offer that for full-time positions. For master students, for graduating master students. Correct. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, oh, is that applicable for also um, uh, TCS employees in India? Like, uh, could they uh, could they transfer or apply for USA roles? 
Um, if you are currently working with uh, TCS and you are on leave without pay, uh, the short answer is you have to go back to your base branch HR and connect with them. But I encourage you to send me an email. We can talk more about that offline. But the short answer is you do have to work with your uh, HR in, in India and they can help in terms of positions here in the US. Thank you. Uh, oh, here's a good question. Are, uh, would you recommend, if a student has an interest in maybe multiple internships or maybe multiple fields, uh, would you recommend that they apply for multiple at once or should they stick with one or maybe two? Um, so for the internships, um, you know, we, we, uh, we are looking for students who, um, you know, are ideally junior or senior year of their undergrad or first year of their master's program. So if they're, if they're closer to their graduation, we'd encourage them to go for the full-time positions because we don't give internships. Like, for example, if you're graduating here in, in uh, May or June, you know, uh, we wouldn't ask you to apply for the internship. We'd ask you to apply for the full-time roles. I hope that makes sense. So you are able to apply for multiple positions. You know, if you're graduating in, in the, uh, in the spring here and you're interested in both the software engineer and the data analyst, yes, you can apply for both. I hope that makes sense. Thank you. I, I'm seeing a lot of like very specific questions in the chat. I wanna uh, again recommend that if you have like a specific question that's like personal or like uh, these are my circumstances and how should I act? I might recommend emailing Joe with that level of specificity yes. uh, just because we're answering some questions that are we wanna address for like many students for like many particular situations. So. Uh, if you have a specific question related to your circumstances, I recommend emailing Joe. Um, here's a somewhat of a broad question that is, um, uh, let's see, uh, what, if a student is, is graduating with a certain graduation date, like, uh, well, I guess what would be the criteria for whether they should apply for the internship versus the full-time role? Like where, where, should, where would that split be, would you say? Sure, if you are graduating in May, June, July, or August, of, of this year, you apply for the full-time role. Outside of that, everything else is gonna fall under the internship umbrella. So if you're a December grad, you know, December, 2022, uh, you know, May or June, 2023, uh, or, or later the, the internship is where you want to apply. Thank you. I'm seeing a question that's like, had some technical difficulties with applying for internship. Um, I don't know what site you're referring to when you're saying click on apply for internship. Uh, so I'm not sure what what I would be offered to, uh, would be able to offer there for advice on that. Um, is GPA required for someone applying uh, for someone with spring intake applying for first summer? Uh, oh, like if they don't have a GPA yet. Uh, so like uh, like if they don't have a GPA, like how would they like determine eligibility for an internship? Um, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, part of that we'd have to, we, we, I know it, you may not have them now, but we do ask for unofficial transcripts. So uh, by the time we get closer to that, we'll, we'll be able to see that. But um, if that's the case, you can always send me an email. We can talk more offline. Thank you. Uh, another question, I'm, I think I understand this question now that it was, uh, does, does the client determine whether a job is done remotely or in person or is that TCS? Like how, how is it decided whether a person is working remotely? Uh, right now, it's based on overall safety. You know, uh, safety is the number one concern for TCS. So we are working with all of our clients and making that determination whether or not it's safe to go back into the office. Um, you know, so it is a, a joint decision. Uh, obviously, you know, we'll, we'll take what the client's needs are and if they need us to be there and it is deemed safe to do so, uh, that, is, that is something that, that we will definitely uh, uh, look at. So uh, I will tell folks, um, this is a great time also to bring up um, as far as vaccination goes, TCS does have a policy that all employees are fully vaccinated prior to them uh, joining the organization. So that does include their first and second uh, doses of the vaccine. Uh, so, you know, at least coming on board, uh, all folks will be required to be fully vaccinated um, before they join the organization. Thank you. I, I suppose sort of a follow-up question to that, that is, uh, would the candidate or the employee have um, uh, somewhat of like an input on like their, their preference for uh, in-person or remote work? Um, yes and no. If, if, the, if the client is saying that we need folks to be there in person, um, 
then no, then, you know, obviously we want to make sure we're taking care of our client and serving our clients uh, needs. Uh, so they would be required. So right now it, it's one of those, we are working remotely until it is deemed safe. And then once that uh, client says, you know, hey, we, we want folks back on board, the expectation is folks will relocate and start going back into the client location. Thank you very much. Um, on the topic of the internships, we were mentioning earlier about like uh, about TCS, like current and former employers or employees um, and application for the internships. If a person was formerly working at TCS and is not currently, would they, is the process for them to apply still the same as someone who hasn't worked there before or would they coordinate through an HR rep who they maybe previously worked with? Yeah, I, I tend to get this a lot from folks who are from India and who are trying to, they worked at TCS in India and they came here and they're looking for a role. Uh, if you've worked for TCS before in, in, in any capacity, you always go back to your uh, base branch HR. Um, whether you're on leave without pay, whether you've left and you're looking to come back, that is always your starting point. Thank you for clarifying. I, uh, so we've established that uh, for the internships and we're on the slide at this time that uh, that US citizenship is required for the internships. And I, as a point of clarification, I want to check with you uh, whether CPT uh, what, uh, is an eligible option for students uh, who, uh, for the internship. Uh, no, unfortunately. So that's why we mentioned uh, international students are not eligible to, to apply for, for our internship. Okay, so there's, there's a flat out for if, if students are interested uh, in working with TCS and they're international students without US work authorization, they will want to focus their efforts on the full time roles specifically. Correct. Thank you. Uh, we, uh, I'm getting uh, uh, some questions in the chat on that matter, so I want to make that clear. Uh, we have a lot of questions, and thank you for that. I, it's just a lot to cycle through. Give me just a moment. Uh, and Christopher, Debita, if you guys want to jump in, if there's anything I'm not missing or you guys might uh, be a little more comfortable with, uh, please feel free to, to add anything. There's a oh. question about the regions. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, please go ahead. Uh, on the question of like uh, working within regions or like transferring within a region, uh, I think you touched upon this, but it's worth mentioning again. That, uh, that people would have the option of moving outside of a region. Is that right? That is correct. So they can, they can choose that uh, when they're going through their initial interviews. Um, they can talk about, you know, uh, if they want to say, hey, I, I prefer to work in the Western region, which is Texas, Arkansas, Arizona, or Colorado. You know, we, we can make note of that. And as they're going through the process, make sure if they do get selected, that the client that they would work with would be somewhere within that region. Thank you. Uh, that, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, uh, sort of a technical question here. Um, at what point when students are applying for the internships, will they be able to spe specify their particular area of interest? Like I have a question in the chat about like, uh, they're not finding a specific link for the data analyst intern. And so how would they be able to find that particular field? Sure. So the reason we do that, we, we kind of put them all in one. So uh, again, working with our customers and working with the demand that we have, uh, when we get the demand for that, we will be able to usually determine what, what that uh, internship would be uh, when we contact the, you know, the students and uh, we'll let them know about the opportunities and what the specifics are uh, for that. Uh, otherwise, we'd have three different uh, internship role postings. And from our experience, it's a little bit easier to group them all, all together. Thank you for that. I think, uh, again, I think we're seeing some more specific questions. If you have very particular circumstances about your situation and you're wanting advice on, these are my circumstances for my application and how should I proceed? Mm -hmm. um, we may, um, I, I think we may put it in the chat when I'm next available to do so. Um, but Joe has very kindly put his email uh, uh, in a presentation slide and we put it in the chat. And I'd recommend reaching out to him himself. Thank you very much um, with like this type of question. Uh, if like if your particular circumstances are this and you're asking for how to proceed, I'd recommend that type of question to uh, to field to Joe that way. Absolutely. I'm also reading these questions out loud and like I might be reading your nope, question yep. out, loud, out loud the wrong way. So that's probably the best way to make sure you're yeah. 
question is very thoroughly read to him. Absolutely. Um, so, so let's do this. Uh, I know you're going through a few more, but um, um, Christopher and, and Davida, I know you've heard some of the questions and whatnot, but uh, I just, as we start to wrap up here, I, I do want to get um, just any last thoughts uh, from, from you, um, you know, things that you want to add as, as we kind of close out. Uh, so Christopher, I'll, I'll start with you. Any, any closing thoughts or things that you want to share as, as we begin to wrap up here? Gosh, I'm not sure how to word this, but let me give it a shot. Um, so I think I think the last, you know, like final thought I want to just put out there is um, um, I know some of this stuff might just be really how can I like anxiety inducing? Let me put it that way. Uh, you might be asked to move. Uh, there's a tr the initial training program, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. I wouldn't worry so much about that at in the beginning, right? I mean, this is an initial this is this is really your first step. I mean, for some of us are your first step into a, a ginormous industry and also a very ginormous community. Um, and you will you will find that once you join, um, you will not want to leave. So take the plunge, don't let the anxiety consume you. Um, these are all very technical um business like details but the experience that you gain is worth i think taking the uh taking the uh or making the promises that that that, that tcs is asking you to make all right christopher thank you so much uh Demita, what what final thoughts do you have to share yeah i i do agree with christopher and i echo that so these are like part of the process like go to any company you have to follow that but the main thing we should look at the learning opportunity and what do you want to do in the next five years, then this is the right start or the best start I can say. So, yeah. All right. Well, guys, I appreciate uh, all of all of uh, your insight and, and your feedback. And uh, Patrick, are, are there any maybe one or two more uh, questions that you've kind of grouped together that we can answer uh, as, as we wrap up? Uh uh, perhaps we can make one final point, or if you can reiterate one final point about uh, the eligibility for international students for your available roles, uh, how would you summarize that uh, in a nutshell? Sure. So for international students, we ask them to be graduating with their master's degree. Uh, graduate with a 3.0 or higher cumulative GPA. Um, and then, you know, obviously the work authorization is on your OPT um, and then be open to relocation. So those would be the, the four best ways I could describe to an international student what, what our requirements are. So you have to have your master's degree, 3.0. Uh, obviously, you'll be working on your OPT, EAD, and then just be open to relocation. Thank you very much. I think the only question I would leave with is like for next steps. Uh, I appreciate you adding your, your email address to the presentation slide, and we've added it in the chat window. Uh, would you recommend that students connect with you on LinkedIn as well, or should we specifically refer people to the email uh, and just that? The email is probably going to be the best way to do it. You can uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. That is definitely an opportunity. And then again, for applying, the best place to apply is to go through Handshake. We are going to be pulling all the applications and resumes from there. Uh, eventually, the Handshake will redirect you to the TCS website. So start with the Handshake, apply there. That's where we're going to be pulling everything from. Uh, feel free to email me with, with questions, and uh, I will get back as quickly as I can. Thank you, Joe. I'll I'll reiterate that like that different employers use Handshake as a means for connecting with university talent, uh, and so if you apply through Handshake versus applying through something more generic, then like uh, it may not be immediately clear to an employer what what they're uh, where they're applying from, uh, even if the the Handshake application does go uh, does redirect to the TCS page, uh, it can be a useful um, metric for uh, for employers to know. Where, where these students are coming from, where their applicants are coming from. Uh, and we, we do have a couple other links in the chat that I'll just remind everyone about. Uh, we have a survey link uh, uh, that, we, that we want the students to fill out. Uh, this sort of feedback helps us run events that you want to see. If you really enjoyed this event and want to see more of TCS or employers like TCS, uh, let us know. Uh, like, uh, and this, this great, gives us great feedback for, for the employers and gives our team great feedback. 
And if you haven't done so already, please check in for today's event as well. We have the link in the chat for that too. But with that said, uh, I think we, unless there's any other questions, I think we may conclude today's event. And I wanna say thank you to Joe, uh, David, Davita and Christopher for all coming out tonight. Thank you one for assisting. And thank you to all the students for coming out uh, as well. Thank you guys very much. We really appreciate thank you. it. We're honored to have you, uh, that you guys had us here tonight. So stay safe, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all, bye.